one is caught in any transgression you who are spiritual you are skilled people you think you are better off than others in any transgression you are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness but keep watch on yourself lest you to be tempted there are situations in church life let me tell you there are two ways of doing this one is when a church member gets into sin the church has two ways of handling it first next sunday read a letter saying this person is excommunicated from the church that's the best easiest way for the pastor which is the way throw him out of the church now i saw a man suppose one of you buying a bottle of whiskey from the shop across there is a whiskey shop across the road they sell absolute vodka and you can buy it in the nature's basket also there is a counter for that as well so if i saw you freely walking away with a bottle of whiskey from the or any of these shops there are three shops by the, by the way then what i can should do i ask him what i going to do with it so he say, so he may say uncle i am having a barbecue today so this is just to ignite the coal <laughs> maybe it may work i don't know because it, since it is alcohol it may vodka will definitely is 40% alcohol in it now i say no man come on from next sunday onwards you don't ever step into my church i don't want a musician who is using I mean drinking vodka one way of doing it that is fine because then i don't have to worry about anything i don't have to worry about anything why but that is not the christian way that is not the godly way the godly way is not even that oh you got a bottle of vodka so let's celebrate i'll come at 4 o'clock that's another way of dealing with it i'll bring i'll bring some french fries or i'll bring some kebabs that is that's the that's again wrong but the right thing is deal with him gently that is don't destroy him in the process of saving him that's what the problem is don't destroy that person in the process of saving him also that also may happen that also may happen so those of you who are spiritual do one thing restore him these people get caught restore him in a spirit of gentleness but keep watch on yourself lest you to be tempted now lot of people get trapped this temptation of sensuality everything is fine everything is nice and i just want to have a taste of it that's all that they wanted they didn't want to they just wanted to taste it just one puff one peg that's all that they wanted nothing more than that but it could be a trap some people may be simply inquisitive you know i had seen a short clip which i should have used here you know many all the fish are not caught by the fisherman but some are definitely caught you know why when you are, one of the things i like is to i may do it next month also um is to go for fishing when you fish you dangle a worm or a bite or a bait and the fish that is inquisitive the fish that is very inquisitive want to know what it is fish has only one way of knowing what it is that is trying to bite it for fish so inquisitiveness gets trapped there could be sent the seeking of going after sensual pleasures they may get trapped innocence they are very innocent people and innocent people also get trapped but 
when a person, one of our believers, or one who is not a believer, one of the members of the, a believing family, or one of the friend of a believing brother or sister in our congregation, is trapped in any way, we have the responsibility to go and gently restore him, but protecting ourselves. Start, make sure that you are also not tempted. To save an alcoholic, you don't have to be an alcoholic. There was a time when I used to be a, I used to drink socially. Not drink, I mean maybe once in a year. When I traveled into Europe and uh, all these places in conferences and all that, I used to taste alcohol. Not much, to be social alcohol, I mean, just for social parties and all that. If somebody offered me, I would drink some wine with my food, nothing else. But later I realized that I should give it up. I don't think there is anything wrong with social drinking. It depends on your culture. But I am not encouraging that. Now the reason I stopped is, I want to tell every alcoholic that alcohol is bad. To stop that, I have to give up a pleasure. Why? To stand firm and say, alcohol is bad, whichever amount you drink, whether it's a drop, whether it's a bottle, it is bad. But there's no way I can tell an alcoholic, drink it less. No. And I don't want to be tempted any time in my life. So I gave up that for years and years now. And years and years, I haven't touched a drop even. The reason is to restore somebody. I am not ministering to a lot of alcoholics now. But I may have an alcoholic who walk into my church. But to tell that person, don't ever go near a bottle. I have to take a stand. Now, make sure you don't get trapped. Now, when I was preparing the sermon, one of the stories that came to my mind is from the Aesop stories. Have you heard the story of the lion which was trapped in a net, hunter's net? The lion, the king of the forest, was trapped in a net. And the hunters will be coming in the morning. But he saw a little rat. The rat said, I will rescue you. And it is huge. It was huge, the, 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 it was anyway definitely bigger than the size of the uh, lion and the lion tried to bite it, but the, like, lion, the lion could not break it. But the little rat came and took the whole night, patiently nibbled it, cut it with its sharp, by piece by piece by piece by piece to make a bigger hole so that the lion can escape. And the lion, it saved the lion's life. Many times it happens. So much of patience from those who are spiritual. It takes so much of patience from those who call themselves better than others. It's only a claim. It's not a, it's simply a claim. To stand with those who are trapped. Those who are trapped and sustain them. That is what church is. When people leave the church for some reasons, maybe they are trapped, they don't have time for church. I make it a policy, I say, we may remove you from the WhatsApp group, but we don't normally do that. But I sometimes say, when people come and say, me, we are leaving the church, they maybe have reasons. I say, we may remove you from the WhatsApp group because there are, this is family news. It is not for those who are willfully have left the church. They don't have to, they don't have to be uh, knowing what is going on in the church without being part of the church. But I have so far removed no one from the WhatsApp group myself, unless they have opted out. But I say one thing. You will still remain in our prayer list. 
This is the policy of the church, or as long as I am the pastor of the church. We don't remove them from our list of people whom we pray for. Because we still care for. We still care for people. Many people get trapped. We are sorry for them. But do never ever condemn a person who is trapped, caught in transgression. Judgment is not ours. Sometimes I was talking to somebody yesterday, yesterday or day before yesterday. Never judge anyone. A man was very judgmental about somebody. And now he acted on it. He was, took a very strong stand. This was some, something that I was discussing last Sunday, sorry, last week with somebody else. Now he is in the same situation. Now he is facing a similar situation. Now he says, what, I can't do that. You know why? Because I have already condemned somebody, judged somebody. Now the same judgment is coming against me now. That is why the Bible says, do not judge others. Do not pass judgment. Because our judgment is tentative, temporary. It's only for this world. There is a final judgment. Let's decide there. Not now. Never write off anyone from our mind. But can we stand? With prayer is definitely a way we can stand. But keep our doors open when people want to come back. Throw a lifeline. Always. If your friend has, is lost, you think that's evangelical blasphemy. Lost. Nobody is permanently lost. That's what I believe. Because I have seen people lost come back later. I had in my own foolishness had stopped praying for people, saying that this guy will never be redeemed. I was a Calvinist those days. But God, when I have seen 20 years later, that man standing for God, whom I wrote off, whom I wrote off, God restored. But the only thing is that we can be part of the restoration work that God is already doing if we are not judgmental. Be ready. Throw the lifeline. Be a lifeguard. To imagine yourself as a lifeguard ready to rescue people from the water before they drown. But don't be like the Kerala police. Now I went to the beach a uh, 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 few months back and the beach was crowded with people. People are youngsters are uh, venturing into this. There is no lifeguard there. But there is uh, police wearing long khaki trousers, their badges and all sort of things with a lathi, with a, with a, with a, so if somebody drowns, this man will not be able to rescue him. He is not in his swimming suit. He will drown himself with this heavy khaki uniform. See, that is some mockery. And I said, what's going on? They have an ambulance ready in the, in the beach. The beach I used to frequent when I was a small boy. Now it is crowded, very much crowded. And the police is standing there to punish people going into the water. But if somebody falls into the water, they have no system to rescue them. How will they rescue them with these heavy shoes? By the time they jump into, the person will be died. This is what church is. Church is most of the time, Kerala police posted in the, on beach duty. There is a purpose to save people, but saving by punishing, condemning and judging. No. Be ready to save. Always at a distance, a redeemable distance. Now I want everybody, if you have a friend to whom you witnessed, maybe might have come to the church one or two times and dropped off. Back to bad habits, you met him in places which is not supposed to be, he is not supposed to be or she is supposed to be. Keep praying. Have a lifeline ready to throw, ready to jump into that situation and rescue a person out. The second responsibility and the last one to others is bearing each other's burdens. 6.2 Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now this may look little contradictory to 6.5 
where it says everyone should bear his own load. Everyone should bear his own load. But 6 2 says, if you be bear what each other's load. These are two aspects, it's not contradictory. It's only two dimensions of our responsibility. First, bear our own load. Second, if you can, not only can, should bear others load as well. What is this load? This load is, you know, the burdens that people carry. Many people are not able to sort out their life. They have problems. They want to be serious. They want to be regular to church. They want to, to live free of temptations, overcome temptations, but they are not able. They are not able. Then what should those who are spiritual should do? They should go and bear a little bit of their burden. I grew up in a rather healthy church, I would say. The one of the things that church did to me and to my family and to all of us is, when we were, when we had too much to bear and unable to bear, the church came for help. When we were sick and we were not able to pray, the church came and said, we will carry your burdens to the Lord. They came together and prayed together. Or they prayed earnestly. They prayed with tears. That is carrying each other's burden. Not only your own burden, you'll be responsible. But when a person is sick, go and pray. When a person needs encouragement, go and encourage that person. Be always willing to carry another person's burden while we carry our own burden. That is, that's a beautiful verse. I love this verse. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Those who had been going through this sermon series so far, we haven't completed it yet. We'll continue later. We haven't completed the sermon series. See, it's all about the law of Moses, isn't it? The people in Galatia, they came to the Lord. They became believers without obeying, observing the law of Moses, but by putting their trust in Jesus. Now they are tempted to follow the law of Moses. But Paul says, no, no, you don't have to. But there is something else in its place that is called the law of the spirit or the law of Christ. And that is, according to James 2.8, that is the royal law of love. Christ has only one law, and that is the royal law of love. Now, this is a big world of difference between the two. The world of difference between the two. The law of Christ and the law of Moses. The law of Moses distances a person from the offender. For example, a leper. Take the case of a leper. In the case of the leper, if a person is declared a leper, the rest of the community distances themselves from him. They run away from him. That is the law of Moses. They want to protect themselves. If a person is sick, send him to some place away from others. They want to protect themselves. If a person is a sinner, kill him. That is the law of Moses. But law of Christ is different. Don't touch him. That is what the law of Moses says. But the only sick person, people, whom Jesus ever touched were lepers. It was a violation of the law of Moses. When the law of Moses says, don't touch, the law of Christ says, touch the untouchable. When the law of Moses says, do not go near the sick, the law of Christ says, lift them up, touch them, heal them. Let them touch the, the tip of your garments. When the law of Christ says, kill an offender, 
put to death an offender. The law of Christ says, because of it works, what works behind it is, or uh, underneath this is the law of Christ. It says, no, restore an offender. A woman who had five, uh, many wives, many husbands, a woman caught in adultery, they deserve to die according to the law of Moses. But the law of Christ says, no, they have hope in Christ. Thus, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Probably I should take a break now from the series. There's a beautiful conclusion to the sermon series, at least now, for now. We are under, not under the law of Moses at all. That doesn't mean we have freedom to do anything we like to. We have obligations. Because we are free from the law of Moses and we have become under slaves to the law of Christ and it redraws all the equations. The world has to be seen in a new way. Church is no more the exclusive club of tongue speaking, spiritually minded, singing, praising, giving people. It is not. There is still room for those who are not really accepted by the society or other people who are called themselves Christians. We are there, we are here to throw a lifeline to those who are sinking. We are here to go after those who are apparently lost. We are here to give life to those who seem to be dead. That is the ministry of the church. And let's pray that God will give us this grace now to be the people that he wants us to be. Agents of change. People of patience. People of love. To fulfill the law of Christ. Could you stand with me as we commit ourselves to the message, to the word that we heard today? Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless us, to be people of change, people of hope, not having hope for ourselves, but for hope for those who the world has decided, declared that they have no hope. Many time, times, Lord, we are tempted. We take decisions by our own intellect. We take decisions according to our own human judgment and see people who have and say that they have no hope. But give us the grace to look at people and say, God can, from the dry bones, Rise up a mighty army. Look at every individual life which is lifeless in Christ to say, God can bring life back to these dead bodies. And we pray, O oh Lord, that we will be people who are moved by your grace, your kindness, and your mercies. O oh Lord, forgive our ignorance. Give us a heart to pray and stand with our friends who may not be by the yardsticks of many churches, many Christians. They may not be. They may not meet up the standards that the this, this, that some people use. They may fall short. But we pray that this church will have a vision for the lost and those who are being lost that we will be the restorations. You are the God of the city, O oh Lord. Help us to be servants of the God of the city who is doing mighty things in the city. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.